everybody who is in the field of diabetology knows dr sr arvind very well he is a senior diabetologist and an avid speaker he is there in all the forums and uh, an excellent orator as well so uh, and he has been part of many investigations he has many publications to his credit and today he is going to talk to us about severe hypoglycemia is it causal or just associated with an increased cardiovascular risk over to you dr arvin thank you uh, thank you so very much for that uh, nice introduction uh, can i be allowed to share my screen i think the administrators are uh, okay now it's it's open thank you just let me know if you can uh, hear me and you can see my screen and you can yeah we can screen. yes we can. yes we thank can. you so very much uh, now i uh, I, I would like to thank sanjay and neeta and then i also came to know of the secret of their uh, long life and anti aging it, it must be metformin which uh, both of them must be using and unfortunately i cannot use metformin to my scalp in spite of doing everything i seems to be losing hair i mean on a serious note i think uh, this is a topic uh, that that's actually something it's it's very very important so I, i'll just start with this hypoglycemia and uh, diabetes we know it occurs both in type 1 and type 2 diabetes and we also call it the necessary evil and it is there in all of our patients and we must learn to live with it and stop really complaining about it definitely occurs more in patients who are taking insulin so patient education and empowerment is a must and we have to concentrate on that there has to be individualized glycemic goals we have to use smbg and we have to be flexible and rational in use of insulin and it's also important to use education as a tool to educate the family of the patients with type 2 diabetes let's go back to the basics and see what exactly happens in a normal individual who does not have diabetes the first difference of course is a decrease in insulin when once the blood glucose level reaches around 80 85 mg the second difference is an increase in glucagon secretion and this happens at a level of about 65 70 and the third defense is an increase in epinephrine secretion and we know what happens when glucagon gets secreted and the third defense when there is an increased secretion of epinephrine i will not go into the details so this is another drawing which basically tells you at what levels of the blood glucose there is glucagon release adrenaline release and a cortisol release and we also know below a value of about 50 probably there will be a cognitive dysfunction today the classification of hypoglycemia is very clear i have taken this from the ada standards of care 2021 level 1 a glucose value less than 70 level 2 a glucose value less than 54 and three a severe event characterized by altered mental and or physical status requiring assistance for treatment of hypoglycemia so you have three levels level 1 2 3 most of our patients can manage on their own if they are in level 1 and some who are eng and who are well educated and who know all about hypoglycemia can also manage at level 2 level 3 is the problem that we generally face if you look at the standards of care for the definition of severe hypoglycemia it's an event requiring assistance of another person to actively administer carbohydrate glucagon or any other action that we take to reverse hypoglycemia so what happens with hypoglycemia we'll just go back to the basics the evidence we have till today a very concrete evidence is in older adults repeated severe hypoglycemia is definitely associated with an increased risk of dementia this is very clear severe hypo can also be associated with an increased risk of 
CV disease, especially in patients with type 2 diabetes, although whether hypo is causal is not at all clear even till today because we don't have studies. Unfortunately, no death certificate mentions that hypoglycemia is the cause of death. And we as doctors, we know it very clearly. Now, let's just look at this slide. This is the slide taken from the Lancet. This is a recent one. Hypoglycemia, cardiovascular disease and mortality in diabetes, epidemiology, pathogenesis management. See, one look at this slide, we tend to believe that major microvascular events, microvascular events, death from any cause, cardiovascular disease and non-cardiovascular disease, all are high in patients who reported severe hypoglycemia. In fact, the above data is taken from the advanced trial. The conclusions were based on increased hazard ratio without taking the comorbid condition. I will tell you exactly what happened in the advanced trial. You will be surprised to know this. Of course, you can't really have a definite trial to prove the causality in which severe hypo is deliberately induced in one group and not in the other and mortality compared. We know it is not possible. So design and inability to capture all hypo events makes it extremely difficult to either confirm or refute causality. However, if you look at the conclusion that a causal association exists between hypo and cardiovascular event, this is supported by very systematic reviews and meta-analysis, which has used the statistical technique of bias analysis, but still it's based on a statistical technique. What happens when you have hypoglycemia? Sorry, I think, uh, okay, I will move further. We know what happens during hypo. We have sympathetic adrenergic response. We have inflammatory response. We have blood co coagulation abnormalities and of course endothelial dysfunction. This is clear. So the role of increased sympathetic drive in hypo may induce dysarrhythmias or arrhythmias and this can increase the cardiac output and serve as a mechanistic evidence that links hypo to a cardiovascular risk. And hypo can also transiently prolong corrected QT interval and it can increase QT dispersion. And QT prolongation is a very strong risk factor for severe ventricular arrhythmias and sudden death. And this is, of course, from the human and animal studies. We know about this. We also know hypoglycemia triggers inflammation. So I will, I will not go into the details of this. This is to tell you what happens and this is again from the animal studies and not the human studies. Let's look at some of the trials which have looked into severe hypoglycemia. We'll start with ACCORD which actually got stopped. Now if you look at ACCORD it was designed to determine whether a therapeutic strategy targeting A1C levels to near normal that is less than six would actually reduce the rate of CV events. In fact, there were more deaths. So the primary outcome was a three-point composite of CV death, non-fatal MI and non-fatal stroke. The intensive therapy group experienced a significant, that was almost 35% increase in the CV death component and trial was halted after three and a half years. Both arms had higher mortality rate among those with severe hypoglycemia. See, this never gets discussed. All that we see is the intensive therapy group experienced a significant 35% increase. But if you look at both the arms, there was higher mortality among those with severe hypoglycemia. Now, can you really blame hypo in the ACCORD trial? Now, these are the facts. Mortality was associated with individuals with a history of severe hypo episode and it was 2.8% for intensive arm versus 4.9% for standard control arm. Among participants with no history of severe hypo, mortality was higher in the intensive treatment arm versus the standard arm. So unless we read the complete article, 
we tend to blame severe hypo to be the cause. Now, actually, you can see the standard control arm was 4.9 versus 2.8 in the uh, <coughs> main arm, which was looking at a very tight glycemic control. Now, look at the devote trial. If you read only the abstract, now this is the conclusion. It clearly says those treated with Dclodac had a lower incidence of MACE. These observations support the hypothesis that hypoglycemia is a risk factor for cardiovascular events. Now, you, if you read the full article, the same authors themselves have written this in the discussion part. They have very clearly said the reduction in MACE in parallel with the reduction in severe hypoglycemia with Dicrodac versus Glatin supports but does not prove a causal link between these two events. In the absence of a specifically designed randomized controlled trial comparing high or low rates of severe hypo and relation to maze, which is neither ethical nor feasible, a direct causal link between severe hypo and adverse cardiovascular outcomes cannot be demonstrated. Now, even in Carolina trial, there was an increase of hypoglycemia in the glimiteride arm by almost 3%. Interestingly, in spite of increased hypo, there was no increase in death, 3 point or 4 point maze. In fact, hospitalization due to hypoglycemia was more in the linagliptin arm, but this never got discussed when once the trial results were announced. So we come to the question, is hypo and CV risk, is it causal or association? The two physiological response may contribute to CV event susceptibility, especially in those with long-standing diabetes, established ASCVD and cardiac muscle dysfunction. This risk might be further confounded by the development of impaired awareness to hypo, especially in patients with coexisting CV or probably autonomic neuropathy, and that can be a strong risk factor. So we have to avoid and use strategies to avoid hypo as much as possible while we are managing the patients. So the final verdict, severe hypoglycemia, severe risk, is it causal or association? This joke is explanatory. This, this man is saying, everybody who went to the moon has eaten chicken. And this man says, good grief, chicken makes you go to the moon. So when studies find an association between two things, it does not mean one thing is caused the other one to happen. This is something that we have to remember. So all the bodies are confused about this particular fact. Even till today, a lot of discussions happen before they come out with the guidelines. So the final important thing is, this is not the time to actually debate about hypo actually causes an increased CV risk or not. It can in one set of patients. So you actually look at the risk which can potentially be associated with hypo and therefore try to minimize it as much as possible. Severe hypo might increase the risk. So we have to be a little careful when we are treating the patients. If not increase the CV risk, it can definitely make the patients go mad because nobody likes to have a hypo because it's terrible to have a hypo. Low HbA1c levels are associated with an increased frequency of severe hypo. So individualizing treatment goals in people with diabetes is what we need to do. And we have to be careful when we are starting insulin and we have to educate the patient, which is going to empower them to take care of this particular problem. Thank you very much. I rest my case there. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Arvind, for that very enlightening talk. We are very glad you were with us today. And thank you for that.